Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here. Over the last few months, our community has been flooded daily with troubling accounts surrounding the failed attempt to sell the JEA and hijack it from the ratepayers and taxpayers of Jacksonville. What we now know, which I believe is only the tip of the iceberg, has rocked Jacksonville, cast a dark cloud over our city, and damaged trust in our government. While the media, council auditor, and ethics officer have done an outstanding job in helping to bring many of the bad decisions and wrong actions to the public's attention. There are still many questions to be asked and information that must be learned. The public has a right to know exactly what happened, why it happened, how it happened, and who was involved. That is why I am forming a special council committee to investigate every aspect turn over every rock, look behind every curtain, and bring all that we do not know and what we deserve to know into daylight for everyone to see. My focus is on the ratepayers of JEA and the taxpayers of Jacksonville. The JEA is our most valuable asset. It has earned the respect of the people of Jacksonville. JEA provides excellent service at fair rates and has one of the strongest balance sheets of any utility in the country. And it contributes approximately $118 million each year to the city of Jacksonville. JEA employees are local heroes. Linemen respond quickly to every service need. In the face of hurricanes and storms, they risk limbs and life to restore normalcy to our communities. Even while at their own homes, there may be darkness and destruction. During the secret process to sell the JEA, those employees, past and present, have been disrespected and treated unfairly. They too deserve to know the truth. We all need to learn lessons from this. We must do whatever is necessary so this city and the people of this community never face something like this again. Let me make something else very clear. We will uncover and hold accountable anybody who had anything to do with trying to take advantage of our city and the JEA ratepayers, whether it's lobbyists, investment bankers, lawyers, bidders, or employees. We will fight to recover the loss of wasted money and repair the damage this has done to our rep reputation and the community's trust. For any senior executive found to have been involved in wrongdoing, we will urge immediate termination for cause. For anyone who asks why I am doing this in the light of an ongoing federal investigation, there are five important reasons. Number one, we have no idea what the feds are investigating. It may only be a tiny piece of the JEA mess. For, for instance, will they only investigate the pup? Number two, we have no idea how long the federal investigation will last. It could be over a year. Number three, what if the feds, investigating only a small piece, find there is no criminal wrongdoing. There would be no report, and we are no further in knowing the entire truth than right now. Number four, the city council needs to investigate to transparently document the history of this mess from the day someone said, hey, maybe we can sell the JEA, until the day the ITN was pulled. There needs to be a chronological and thorough investigation, naming names for accountability. Number five, the mission of the City Council investigation should be a public report that restores the citizens' belief in the integrity of their government. 
This is not something the feds will do in a criminal investigation. Having said all that, we will cooperate in every way with the federal investigation. Now let me talk about the committee. I will appoint three members. All three are lawyers and are highly qualified to conduct this type of investigation. The committee will be chaired by Councilmember Rory Diamond, a former US, U.S. Attorney, Assistant U.S. Attorney. The other two members will be Councilmembers Brenda Priestley Jackson and Councilmember DeFour. As president, I will serve on the committee when needed as a fourth member. To assist these council members with the legal complexities of the investigation and assist with research and analysis, the council has hired a highly qualified Jacksonville law firm headed by Steve Busey, one of America's most respected attorneys. He will work in coordination with our Office of General Counsel. Witnesses will be placed under oath. I want to thank those council members who stepped up early to criticize and try to stop the nonsense at JEA. I want to work with the mayor going forward to find the best qualified person with the experience of a corporate and civic leader and a reputation for, and a reputation for integrity to be the next member of the JEA board. I also want to thank the mayor for the following, for following our lead to look into what happened and calling for an end to the IETN process. And I want to thank the JEA board for halting the ITN process. However, I want to caution any executive or any board member who might suggest moving forward with the process, as has been suggested with the IPO and co-op. Any consideration about moving forward in any manner regarding selling the JEA would not be looked upon kindly. I would like to note that Melissa Dykes sent an email out Friday announcing that she will recommend keeping JEA as it is today. And that is in line with the conversations I've had with her. So I appreciate her for standing up and, and sharing those sentiments. My office phone number is 255-5204. If anyone has any questions or suggestions, I encourage them to call me. I'd like to thank um, the JEA employees, my, fed, my, my fellow council members, the chair of the Republican Party of Duval County, and the chair of the Duval, uh, Duval County Democratic Party for being here behind me and supporting me in this effort. And with that, I'll close by saying thank you, and I'm open to any questions. Wilson, do you believe any criminal activity occurred here? Well, any criminal activity, that's something the state attorney or the federal um, Bureau of Investigation or the feds would determine. What do you believe? I don't have enough information to say what really happened at this point. Look forward to the uh, investigative committee's report, and hopefully we'll learn something from that. Why did it take so long? Derek Dennis came out long ago demanding this, and now we're coming at this point. What made you come at this point, and why haven't you done this a long time ago? Demanding what? So um, several council members, including myself, called for an end to the ITN process several weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Um, between that time and now, I've been working with the Office of General Counsel and our independent legal counsel to develop a plan to put this investigative committee together. And so now it's time to move forward with it. I don't believe that's done, but we will not start our formal meetings until that's complete at the request of the Office of General Counsel. Why? Because I'm following the lead of the Office of General Counsel. But, I mean, why not just start now? Why does that have to wait to see what happens next? He should be over this week, so this should coincide perfectly. Do you think that Aaron Zahn should get that severance pay he wants? Should he be fired with cause? Based on what I know today, Aaron Zahn should be fired with cause.
anyone who was involved and maliciously tried to sell our utility or committed any criminal acts should be held accountable, regardless of who they are. So my understanding of the process is if this committee wanted to subpoena someone, they would go to one of our standing committees, which is the Rules Committee, and the Rules Committee would vote to decide whether to, to issue that subpoena. How can counsel hold people accountable? Because you talk about it being obviously a charging power, but you mentioned holding those accountable. What would you do? We want to understand, you know, what's happened, and that's part of our process today is to begin the process of going through the records, understanding what happened, and then we can issue a report. Our meetings and our discussions are very public, so if there is something that's criminal in nature, it would be up to another agency or authority to take that over. Besides the uh, standing day board that voted in July to go forward with this process, uh, is that going to be a starting point for this investigation, or if not, how far back do you all want to go in order to keep going fully around what happened? I think as the, as the committee begins to look through the process, they can decide how far back they want to go. But I would, at the very least, start with that, with that date. Um, they may want to go back further than that. Um, it just depends on what's uncovered when they start going through the records and determining what happened. Any kind of time frame for when this report will be in the public domain? Well, my, my goal right now is to ask the committee to complete their report within 90 or 120 days and then submit a report to the city council. Obviously, we have no idea what they're going to get into, get into when they start that uh, process. So if they need some more time, I'll be happy to grant that to them. But my goal today would be that for them to be complete within 90 or 120 days. I know this is a lengthy mayor's office. Are you the advice committee? I uh, copied the mayor's office on my email that I sent to council members today. So it was certainly short notice. Um, I, I wouldn't expect them to be here. But they did not have a lot of notice that I was going to hold this press conference. Well, I, I said that um, this is going to be a city council-led investigation, yes. And we will use our outside legal counsel and the Office of General Counsel in order to staff this committee. And like I said, the, the committee members are three lawyers. Uh, Rory Diamond is a former U assistant U.S. State attorney, or U.S. attorney. So um, I think he's done some of these type of investigations before. I never have, which is why I'm leaning on, on them to conduct the investigation. You know, I don't know who will be on the witness list at this point in time. It'll be up to the, the committee to, uh, to, to vet it out. I would certainly hope that um, they would start um, over at JEA and see where it goes from there. Um, so I really don't have an answer to that. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for being here.